sound. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They were trying to make it have a sound inside, but they were also cancelling outside sound. But anyway, you two ended up with this stage show where no matter where you sat, it was the same, Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, and it had a lot to do with that. It would um, capture sound from different places and reverse it so that, you know, when you get a sound bounce over there, yeah. ah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's no crazy. echo, no, no reflection, no bass at one side. And, that's crazy. You know, because, yeah, that, that is. Um, I know that, like, I was just working on the last podcast show here and the aircon went off too much. Yeah. So I can just lower some EQ here. So, yeah, just you know, find out the what, base on this end and the, and the tops up this end. So it's, it was this. So all I had to do was find that frequency and pull it down. That's and, it. That's it. You on. just find the EQ and you just bend yeah. down that, that, that wave. You know, whatever that hurts is, you just say, okay, well, this is between 440 to 620. Bend that curve down and take it a hiss, you know. Yeah. Um, speaking of films, I watched them. Um, a very good film on the on. I was listening to a lot of podcasts on the way home, so I I think I listened to one of yours. I listened to one, two of Joe Rogan's, Graham Hancock. Um, his podcast with Joe Rogan was just phenomenal. Yeah. I've just finished reading the book. A He's got bit. such a good voice. Yeah, Joe Rogan's amazing, and, and Graham Hancock. There was another guy on there as well. Two of these guys. Oh, are that guy. Um, leading, leading. Both of both of them are leading their own fields of research in in areas that nobody's researched so this guy yeah. studies geology and um and like um uh when oceans move move mountains from old tsunamis randall carlson carlson yeah randall carlson yeah he, he's he been on that show before by himself and it was just my god he just highlights all the places yeah he was the one that said about five to seven thousand years ago there was a huge one off the coast of western australia and they could sh- prove um, uh, these sections in West in WA where it's, yeah. you know, when you think about all the Aboriginals who are really primitive, they will probably completely wiped out very recently ago. That's why. Well, that's, Graham Hancock reckons that um, humanity was wiped out down to about 2,000 people mm. 12,000 years ago. And he's basically saying like, and the most amazing thing that he added to the stuff that I've already read, he said that every six months the planet Earth travels to an asteroid belt. And he said, so 12,000 years ago, a fragment of a, a huge asteroid hit the Earth yeah. and just caused mayhem and wiped everything out. And we're due. You know? <laughs> we're due. Well, he yeah. says every six months we go past this. And he's like saying, humanity as its project should be basically saying, hey, we need to deal with this. Forget about ISIS and all that other nonsense. Mm. We need to, as a planet, de- de- develop systems where we don't get down to 2,000 people again mm. because every six months it's only a matter of time. It happens about yeah, every 12,000 years. We just get, yeah, the moon's got holes in it like you'd never believe. And that's, that's what he's saying. If we get another one of those holes, which we, we could happen any one of these six months. And he said the last time it almost happened was about two years ago and they didn't know about it until five days after it happened. Yeah. Well, this, the one in Russia that actually damaged oh, yeah. a lot of people, I think 2000. You see all those, you see all those Russian screen car dash cams and you just, it was not a huge object, but it hit the earth with so much speed. It sounded like just boom, and it was so loud that the whole sky just lit up like day. And that was yeah. just a small object. Yeah, so, but it was. It gave off some sort of like an atomic. Uh, people had internal injury. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, like actually, a, but there was definitely a two thousand people had this certain injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From just pressure going bang through yeah. the sky. Yeah, oh, was it? Hey, I mean, yeah, it's gonna have it. You, you, well, that's that's what Graham to, Hancock was saying. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, we, get, you, we get wiped out, and then yeah. we and then. There's a great sketch which Joe Rogan does about, you know, what happens if it happens again and only the idiots are left. They're not going to know how everything works. Yeah. He was like holding up a mic going, if you, I couldn't build one of these if you left me on an island with all the parts for a million years. Yeah. You know? or, or more like this, look where all our intelligent cities are. They're on the coasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if something happens, all the, all the who, who's going to be left? It's people that are living right in the middle of, um, of these mountain people. Well, you, you know, know who don't have Wi-Fi right now today. It's just a game that of chance. That could have happened before. It's just a game of chance who's left, you know what I mean? I mean, it's all it's, the bay port people, port city people mm-hmm. with the high rises, all those thinkers that are, yeah, we've got all this information technology, books, 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 gone. Who's left? Oh, Dave that lives up the top of Mount Tomwon Road. <laughs> you know who <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. who was sleeping. Yeah, sort no, of thing. Oh, it's it, it, it's crazy. I watched um as well as listening to those podcasts. I watched um the Walter Mitty, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Mm. I loved it. Great movie. I loved it. Yeah. That was very funny. Is that the one where 
It's really sort of inspiration, inspirational. It wasn't he. Now you explain it because I. Well, in in the movie, they make him a, an employee of Life magazine, and it's yeah. being closed down, and uh, he gets sent on this kind of wild goose chase by this guy who's this um, interesting photographer who's a legend with the magazine, and he has to follow his his destiny, I try suppose. Try and find him, and yeah, and try and find that guy. But he's really the guy sending them on a chase, so he can discover. Hey, life's out there, not in an office, you know. And uh, the guy's a bit of a wimp, and he daydreams all the time about what he would really say. And then he starts really saying it, you know, because he's been out in the world. So, Do you remember the way the movie started? He was going to like an RSVP site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden, he just busts out the window, and uh, yeah, he just I was jumps completely out the surprised yeah, yeah, by yeah. That, that film. Do you know what's really funny, actually? Because when I was a kid in school, all the teachers used to call me Walter Mitty. Because right. I used they did because I would always daydream. I was I was not interested when I was a young kid. I didn't do that. Must be an old book. Oh, it's a, yeah, Walter Mitty. Yeah, uh-huh. it's a, he's a, he's well known. He's a, really? a character from a hundred years ago. You know, wow. there's books about him. Yeah, but when I um when I was a kid, like I didn't go to baby school, like you know, crash and all that. I was just taken out of freedom and whacked into a little wooden desk and told to sit still for eight hours. That was incredibly hard to deal with. So. All through my school life, I used to just daydream all the time. People would talk to me. I still do it today. Even my boss said it to me last week. He goes, mate, sometimes when I talk to you, I know that your your mind is elsewhere. But I I, I do that. You know, I'm, I'm a creative person, so I'm always thinking of something else. Um, and so it was good for me to see that film because um, that, that, is, that is how I used to be. Very vivid imaginations about something better than, than my current surrounds, you know. Uh, Chris, who's the chick? Uh, the the comedian. She was beautiful in that. She she's fell really in love funny. With she was in Kirsten. Um, she's called. She's her name is Barbara. In um, <laughs> you remember that in um, yeah. the flight the, the Concords, the chick with the funny eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's great. She's on Saturday Night Live a lot. Yeah, um, she is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, funny kind of name. It's Kirsten Wig. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. No, she's she's, she's got great. that sketch where she's got really small hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In Saturday Night Live. <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aaron Will Ferrell. Oh, brilliant, brilliant! It's a really Good funny, movie. really funny um, Saturday Night Live sketch called "The Curse of Sergio." You should watch that. Yeah, yeah that's really funny. It's about a saxophone player. A guy puts yeah. a curse in him, and he just keeps bursting into the room. It's it's actually John <laughs> John Hayne from um, Mad Men is right. playing Sergio, okay. and it's it's supposed to be the character from the, you know the movie The Wild Boys. Yep. Oh, the Lost Boys. Yep. Yeah, this, yeah. The sax player. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the muscle dude. The yeah. muscle dude. It, it's him bursting right. in through walls every five minutes. Every right. time this guy's having a, a presentation at work or an important moment in his life, it's because he's got a curse and it's really I'm pretty sure fun. he was a famous LA identity. That he, yeah. he was even in one of those um, um, Tina Turner film clips, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we should, we should actually um, talk about Conor McGregor for a minute. Yeah. That was, I mean, yeah. you know. The guy. It was great. It was too short, but I don't even care. It was oh, look, so great. I'll tell you, the UFC, they put on a show like you would not believe. They really do. Like when we were, we were in the, almost the back row. You could still see the octagon beautifully. And um, they've got all the music pumping. They really know how to. I, I couldn't help thinking of that Schwarzenegger movie, The Running Man, when they're in the future and it's the gladiatorial to the death right. games. And everybody just wants to see somebody die. Yeah, you know, wow. we were there just in the roof, and I was just watching this. And they've they've got the um, announcer Bruce. You know what I mean? And he's Bruce going, Buffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's like a he's like Bill Clinton on steroids. This guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, play it now. Can you let's play it through these mics? I I don't know if yeah, I've got I yeah. I heard him. I heard you do it before. You went. Um, I'll see if fighting I can. out of blah. I look at just that one bit, just to hear the crowd. I want to hear it right now. It'll be hard to tee it up, but I'll have a quick look. But while I'm talking about it, I'll tell you about the atmosphere. Like, um, I'll see if I can play this one. Hold on. So this is just waiting for Conor McGregor to come out. That's an Irish song, yeah. That's right? a, that's an Irish song there. So um, get out your seat and jump around. Yeah, everybody I love was that just, song. Everybody was just. If you play that at a DJ set, it and it's everyone's had a few guaranteed winner. Oh yeah, I'll see if I'll see if this is one. Hold yeah. on. And what? 
<laughs> goosebumps. Oh, man. You know what's great? Like, the way he goes, fighting, yeah. you know? And then yeah. he just goes, and he jumps like three feet in the air and just points at the guy, fighting. And then when he, and then he just points his fingers in the air and he goes, it's, and the whole crowd time. goes, time. <laughs> <laughs> and, but when the fight's over, right, the, they played um, team. Yeah, gladiator. Oh, man. Talking about gladiators. Well, yeah, that, but when the fight's <laughs> over, right, um, the, the whole place just goes pitch black. And the next thing, a couple of spotlights come up, like, you know, like a disco ball, but it's enormous. Everyone, there's these, these lights just spinning around slowly like you're in a disco. And, um, and, and they play Teenage Wasteland by, by The Who, which is an unbelievable rock song. Just the build up, you know, and it's, it's just, it just, oh, yeah, it just yeah. builds, builds, builds. And, um, and it, and you're like, whoa. And, uh, <laughs> and then, um, and then what, what happens is after the music's been playing for a while, when it's time for a new fight, all these lights that have been spinning slowly across the crowd, they accelerate, and it's almost as if they all start spinning down the wow. sinkhole. All of them are start getting closer to the stage, and then they disappear, and it's, you're in total darkness for a half a second, and this noise just goes, <laughs> and you're in darkness, and then the, and then this the stage just lights up, so, <laughs> and you're like, oh, here we go again. A couple of ears are about to get ripped off, you know. And, wow. and it just makes you, everybody, and, you know, and then they shine lights in your eyes because they, they do that at gigs a lot. They did it at David Copperfield. Anytime right. they want you to get emotional, they fire a bright light in your eyes out of the darkness and they play music and you start thinking you're crying when you're actually just like somebody yeah. spotlighting you, you know. Um, but when McGregor came out, like that was a seven-minute build-up and he, his, they were chanting his name. It was absolute just chanting and singing and you couldn't even hear the music. The crowd was so loud and he came into the, he stepped into the octagon and um, everyone was just chanting, chanting, chanting. And he had his flag and he was just waving his fist in the air and doing acrobatic stuff. He looked amazing. Jose Aldo came out. You could not hear his music. The boos were just raining down on him. I mean, it made me think, man, this is, this is the Coliseum here. This yeah. guy is getting led out to the lions here. If he can put on a show after this incredible, everything that he did was just uh, just an avalanche of booing, you know? Did they play Sinead? They did play. So Conor McGregor came in and they had like House of Pain remixed and then it went into Sinead O'Connor. But and it was it, a tape because I heard that day. Yeah. Did you hear this? About Sinead O'Connor trying to kill herself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, heavy. Heavy, heavy nuts, you know? Um, <laughs> Is it true though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's having all kinds of breakdowns back in wow. Ireland. Um, she's got she's got I mean, she's got issues with her, her family, basically, and her children and um, custody, and she's deemed unfit that flipped to look the whole after country them, so. out. Yeah, it's flipped everybody out. And um, but yeah, so Conor McGregor, they had um, this notorious Big song coming on, you know, and it's just this thumping bass line. It's a sample. It's actually a sample of a Herb Albert. Um, song called rise so um if you look it up you can it's actually the conor mcgregor beat that yeah. that sample's from <coughs> but um he got he came on the stage amazing reception aldo comes in booed every step of the way and then you look at the footage of aldo in the in the ring oh yeah normally he comes in and he holds his hands up and he walks around with a flag he was like a a, a guy waiting to be executed yeah he just walked in his and kept his head was... down and that was it and um and then basically, as soon as the fight started, thirteen seconds. But if you, I've like once he knocked him out, we just like there was one second of disbelief, you know. I've been at, uh, I've on, I've only ever gone overseas specifically for a sporting event once, and that was when I went to Istanbul, to watched this final called the the Miracle of Istanbul, and there was a minute when we were three nil down, we came back from three all against a team that had only ever let two goals in, in the last ten games. We've got three goals in six minutes or whatever it was. And then basically beat them on penalties. And when the last penalty went in, we all just stopped and time froze.